Hey everybody, in this video, we're going to start talking about a calculus technique called implicit differentiation. First, let's talk about the idea of explicit functions. An explicit function is a function that is written in terms of the independent variable only, like y equals f of x, where y is a function of x. Let's look at some examples. y equals 2x plus 1, or y equals e to the 2x minus 5, etc. These are all functions that are defined in terms of the independent variable x. y equals some function of x. So now, let's talk about relations and implicit functions. As an example, let's look at the relation x squared plus y squared equals 9. Now, this is a circle with a radius of 3. As we can see, this is not a function. It does not pass the vertical line test. But we can solve for y, and when we do that, we get y equals plus or minus the square root of 9 minus x squared. Each separate equation is a function. The positive square root function is the top half of the circle, and the negative square root function is the lower half of the circle. Together, these are the implicit functions of the relation x squared plus y squared equals 9. In other words, they are the functions that are implied through this relation, even when they're not expressed explicitly. Here you can see we've taken the relation x squared plus y squared equals 9 and we've substituted in the implicit functions y equals plus or minus the square root of 9 minus x squared. When we simplify the algebra, we get 9 equals 9. That means the implicit functions satisfy this equation. But here's the thing. For some relations, it might be extremely difficult or impossible to solve for the implicit functions. Below, I've shown some examples. How can we solve for y? Even if we don't solve for y, these curves can still be graphed. And this means, for a given point on a curve like this, we need a way to find the instantaneous rate of change at that point. But how can we find the derivative of a relation if we can't solve explicitly for y? And the answer is by using a technique called implicit differentiation. Implicit differentiation is a technique that lets us find the instantaneous rate of change at any point on a relation, and it involves using the chain rule. And here's how the technique works. Suppose we have an equation that involves y and x, and we want to find dy dx. What we're going to do is take d dx of every term in the equation, which means take the derivative with respect to x, and then we'll solve for dy dx. And when you take d dx of a term with y in it, you'll have to apply the chain rule. Let's take a look at a few examples to see how this works. If we want to find the derivative of y of x, but we don't know what y of x is, all we can say is that the derivative is y prime of x, which is the same as just saying dy dx. The same holds true if we have a function y of x squared. If we want to find the derivative of that, then we just have to apply the chain rule. That would give us 2 times y of x times y prime of x. And that's the same as just saying 2y times dy dx. Similarly, if we want to find the derivative of y of x cubed, we'll just apply the chain rule. And that gives us 3y of x squared times y prime of x which is the same as 3y squared times dy dx. So for an explicit function, like y equals x squared plus 2x plus 1, to find the derivative, we'll take d dx of both sides. d dx of y is just dy dx, and d dx of x squared plus 2x plus 1 is 2x plus 2. So we have the derivative, dy dx equals 2x plus 2. If the original function was rearranged, to be y minus x squared equals 2x plus 1, we could still apply the same technique. We can take the derivative with respect to x on both sides. d dx of y equals dy dx, and d dx of negative x squared is negative 2x. d dx of 2x plus 1 is just 2. And now what we can do is solve for dy dx. And that gives us dy dx equals 2x plus 2 and that's the same answer that we got before. What we did here was something subtle. We treated y as an implicit function, and then we took the derivative of y with respect to x, and that gave us dy dx. Then we solved for dy dx. So let's apply that same technique to the relation x squared plus y squared equals 9. First, we'll take the derivative with respect to x on both sides of the equation. 
That gives us d dx of the quantity of x squared plus y squared equals d dx of nine. Then we can find the derivative with respect to x of each of the separate terms. d dx of x squared equals two x. d dx of y squared equals two y times dy dx by the chain rule. This is the tricky part. We've treated y as a function of x. So we just use the chain rule. y squared is equivalent to the quantity of y squared. And if we take the derivative, we would have two y to the first power times the derivative of the inside part, which is dy dx by the chain rule. Then d dx of nine is just zero because nine is a constant. Now what we can do is solve for dy dx. When we do the algebra, we get dy dx equals negative x over y. So what does this tell us? Well, now if we know a point that's on the curve, then we can find the slope of the tangent line at that point using the dy dx equation. So for example, the point one radical eight is on this curve. We can check that by plugging in one and radical eight into x and y, and we see that it satisfies the equation. So now if we need to find the instantaneous rate of change at the point one radical eight, we can plug that into the dy dx equation, which is negative x over y, and that gives us negative one over radical eight. Then we can even find the equation of the tangent line at the point in question. We now have the point and we now have the slope so we can use point slope form and that gives us the equation of the tangent line. Stay tuned. In the next video, we'll continue to discuss implicit differentiation with some more complex examples. But for now, keep on practicing. And that's how you rock calculus. <laughs>